my heart during prayer was encouragement. And I got a little, a little bit to go over on encouragement. You know, while during our tough seasons, such as loss of dear ones, illness in the family, chaos all around us, world calamities, or just plain old life challenges, the joy of the Lord is what truly sustains and strengthens us. And in these times, we all need a little encouragement. This world is hard, especially on Christians. The Bible tells us that even Elijah, Jonah, and Job at times felt defeated to a point that it would affect them and, and how they felt about their own lives. Paul, Jeremiah, and Jesus himself all had to deal with the sorrow of watching people destroy themselves and reject God, and reject his truth, and not trust in him, which proves that we all need encouragement. One of the most beautiful gifts in the world is the gift of encouragement. When someone encourages you, the person that person helps you over a threshold that you might otherwise never have ever crossed on your own. In fact, Hebrews commands us to encourage one another daily as long as it is called today. The word encourage is in the present tense. It indicates a habit or a way of life. It means we don't wait for others to encourage us, but we take the initiative. We must encourage even if others could not. Amen? Amen. Even if it, others would not. We are to encourage one another. And I can tell you that during the last couple of weeks for me and my family, a little bit of encouragement did go a long way. And I thank you all for, for doing that. Hebrews 3, 12 to 13 says, See it, brothers, that none of you has a simple, unbelieving heart that turns away from, living, from the living God, but encourage one another daily, as long as it is called today, so that none of you may be hardened by sin's deceitfulness. When one is discouraged, and we all can go through some discouragement at times, when, when we fail to encourage, sin can deceive and harden the heart to the point that it becomes sinful and unbelieving, leading the person to turn his or her back on God, and we don't want that. Someone wrote, people live by encouragement. Without it, they die, slowly, sadly, bitterly. But God, but God. So I stand before you this morning as your brother in Christ and encourage you to hold fast in unswerving loyalty to Christ's love, no matter what the circumstance is. Sometimes all it takes is a little encouragement of God's people to help us become strong and fervent Christians. Amen. Amen. So church family, let's encourage one another as we prepare to praise and celebrate God's goodness this morning. Amen. Let us go to God first. Most gracious and Heavenly Father, we just thank you right now, Lord God. We thank you, O Heavenly Father, to prepare, for preparing our hearts to receive you this morning, to celebrate you this morning. Lord God, if it wasn't for you, we wouldn't be here. And we just thank you for the opportunity to be here with you, Lord God. Holy Spirit, rain down on this church family this morning and all those who are watching. Lord, allow us, O Heavenly Father, to praise you in truth, O Heavenly Father, as only you would see fit. Thanks to those who have been able to make it here this morning, those who are on their way, Lord God. And Lord, we just thank you, Lord God, for allowing us an opportunity to praise you. And Lord, we thank you for your steadfast encouragement over us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. Let's go, men.
to you and be glad in it, okay? Amen. We didn't have to be this way. We're going to be allowed to be this way. And uh, we just got another opportunity to give him praise to the Lord. Um, I will bless the Lord, all my soul, and all that is within me. I will bless his holy name. Not the pastor's name, not your name, not my mama's name, not my daddy's name. I will bless his name. Psalm 33 goes something like this. I'm going to paraphrase it just a little bit, add a little something to it. It's on the right to praise God. Praise him with the heart. Brother Rock, Congo, keyboard, the drum, the guitar, the bass guitar. It's on the right to praise God. We're going to add our voices to those instruments and praise him together. It's on the right to praise God. And once we praise him together, we ask that it be a sweet, a sweet, a sweet sound. Don't you leave? All right, let's go, Andy. Andy, but. Come on, y'all. I'm going to come sing this song. Oh, 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 oh,
Lord has been good to you. When you look back over your life, and you look how you messed it up, but God still is good.
Wales and Lady Pearl and the members of Sunrise, we welcome everyone and pray that you feel the love of Jesus today as we worship together. Please take a moment to make sure your phone is on silent or do not disturb so that it is not a disruption to the service. If we have any first time visitors, please stand so that we can extend a warm welcome to you. Welcome back, family. Now for our announcements. <coughs> Next Sunday, April 21st, we will celebrate our ninth pastoral and church anniversary. Yeah. And Pastor Aquin from the Lion of the Tribe of Judah Community Tabernacle will bless us with a message from God. There will be food served directly after service next Sunday, so please join us as we honor and appreciate our pastor and celebrate the faithfulness of God in the life of our church. Before we join in fellowship, there are snacks available after service in the fellowship hall. And lastly, we kindly request that no food or drinks be brought inside the sanctuary. These are your announcements. Let's stand and greet each other.
right, I'll be bringing you the scripture this morning, so please stand to your feet. We're coming from the book of Psalms 23. We're on this by heart, but we'll put it on the screen. To watch our weapons that we know we have, say amen. amen. All right. The word reads The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me, your rod and your staff. They comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I was well in the house of the Lord forever. The word of God for the people of God. Amen. Amen. says that he is our shepherd and we shall not want he maketh us to lie down in green pastures that's a peaceful place he leads us beside the still waters that's another peaceful place how many need peace this morning yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's prayer time. And it's time for us to lay it down, whatever it may be, and walk by the still waters and lay in the green pastures. Let our heads be bowed and all eyes closed. Father God, in the name of Jesus, all knowing God, all seeing God, almighty God, all powerful God, we bless your holy name this morning. There is no name that is above your name. There is no God above you, God. We thank you right now, Lord God, for the opportunity to have gotten out of the bed this morning. For the movement of our limbs this morning. For a sound thought in our mind this morning. And for the peace that surpasses all understanding this morning. God, we know that you know everything that's ahead of us. And we thank you for watching over us as we go forward. For you are our shepherd, you are our keeper, you are our deliverer, you are our love, Lord God. You are everything to us. There is none like you. God, you've taken us over the dangerous highways and brought us into this sanctuary. You've brought us here because we have come together with no other mind but to worship and to praise you for you've been so good. You've been so great. Even when we thought it wasn't good, it was still good. Even when it didn't look good, it was still good. And we say thank you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. God, you know all about our troubles. You know all about our deep places, Lord God. You, you know everything about us, Lord. And you reach down when we need the help we need when we need it. Hey, thank you, Lord. God, there are those that are in this place today. Hallelujah, that are looking at things that just mm, don't look movable, don't look changeable, hey, but you are a God of change, and you are the God that can move anything, and we say, we lay it at your feet. 
right now. God, we bless your holy name for moving in our bodies. Those who are going through pain in the limbs and those who are going through issues in the hearts and those who are going through situations that doctors are shaking their heads at. But we know a doctor. Hallelujah.
that, that prayer because as I was standing over there just thinking about the goodness of God that sometimes as my mind just goes blank that you always just remind me of those three words that I can always say is thank you Lord. Um, yeah. Yeah, just thank you for it. Yeah. That prayer and, and, and putting that on my you know our, our heart about allowing God just to to just manifest and just work through me. Um, so thank you for that prayer. That was, you know really appreciate it. Um, you know I don't want to bring the bring the you know the, the, the energy down, um, but it's it's, <laughs> it's uh, because it's, it's you know I can definitely feel the spirit moving in this place and because the energy is so high and so. Uh, you know, I, I, I was gonna come up here. I almost started singing, but but no, 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 no. I'm gonna do my part over there. Uh, right after I do this, I'm gonna do my part instead. Right after the part, I'm gonna do my part. Right after the part, I'm gonna do my part instead. Right over there. But listen, Second Corinthians chapter nine, uh, uh, verse seven. You know, the summary basically like. I teach each of us to examine our hearts as we prepare to give. Um, you know, again, I'm just summarizing 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 7. Uh, but after we examine our heart, uh, it asks us to basically give what the Lord has placed on our heart, right, to give. And then finally, finally, it also reminds us that the Lord loves a cheerful giver. So at that church, Many of us have gone through 
crucial things in life. Some of us are going through some tough times now. Some we know about, and some we do not know about. But through it all, understand this one thing. We've been there and done that. And we're trying to keep you from making the same mistakes we made. If you only listen to us, your life will be a lot better. You won't have as many bruises and scars as we have because we were hard-headed and we wouldn't listen. But if you just take time to listen to what we're saying, you'll find out as you get older, life will be a lot better. You don't have to say, I'm still here. We're still here. Yeah. If you're going through something in life, you'll be able to relate to this song. Amen. Amen. You know, do the best you can. If you know the song, you can sing with us. Amen. Let's go. Let me tell you what it was. 
I think the men yeah. This is fabulous, fabulous, fabulous. Good God Almighty. As far as the church, when you see a bunch of men that's willing to stand yeah. up. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like I told you, we just do the best we can with what we got. Amen. We don't claim to be perfect. We just toss it up to the Lord and say, Lord, we're here. We just do the best we can with what we got. Last Sunday, I told the little kids if they were here, I had, didn't I not tell them that? Yeah. I, 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 I told them I was going to bring them. Didn't I say I was going to bring them? Who did that? Did I not tell I said, now, I, I said, I have enough for all of them. I said, if you come back next Sunday, I got you covered. Did I not tell them that? Yes. Amen. 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 What I was going to do, you see them teenagers back there? And over here? Yeah. Oh, you know what? I like you. I like you. No. Oh, you keep notes. That's how we preach it. You got to come and show me all your notes. All right. Yeah. I'm going to read it too. I'm going to read the preach first. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. You see you over there? I told my Todd. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 I got Ray. Y'all saw Ray. Ray, Ray. Ray, yeah. Ray walking now. opportunity to go back out. A lot of people ask that Pastor, when are we going back out? I told them we were in a rest season. Because the other place we used to go to, the owner kicked everybody off. God's work being done, the owner of that location kicked everybody out. And they haven't even used the place. But the Lord had a ram in the bush right here. Amen. And I told them yesterday that because of their work, our ground was hollow, and our ground was being fertilized because of their work. And they sent me a card and said, Dear Pastor Ron, and we want to let you know how much we appreciate you and your church, Sunrise Fellowship Ministries, for always being there for us and being our biggest fans. We couldn't have done this without you. Can't wait for you to serve 
beside us love Monica and Fred and you guys and they're probably watching uh, this morning and all of it and we, we thank them for the, the work that they did and now we get the opportunity to go back down to them so uh, Deacon Banks and Sister Outlaw for the fact they're be getting together and uh, getting with their committee and start coming up with a plan and call we can go back out and get that deep fried fish and Italian sausage and hamburgers and all that stuff and macaroni and cheese and mashed potatoes and gravy and green beans. We do it up when we go out and that's we got to be ready. And so they know that's what they're waiting. Even the workers out there waiting for us to get back out, but we know we feed them too. Amen. So uh, it's a way of getting back out, feeding uh, God's people and God's creation. Amen. So thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Let's really go to the word. Um, if you take some time, stretch your feet. Second Samuel, chapter nine, the King James version. And the word of God reads: Now David said, "Is there anyone? Is still anyone who is left of the house of Saul that I may show kindness for Jonathan's sake?" <clears throat> And there was a servant of the house of Saul, whose name was Ziba. So when they had called him to David, the king said to him, Are you Ziba or Ziba? He said, At your service. Then the king said, Is there not still someone of the house of Saul? to whom I may show kindness, to show the kindness of God. And Ziba said to the king, there's still a son of Jonathan who is lame in his feet. So the king said to him, where is he? And Ziba said to the king, indeed, he is in the house of Micaiah, the son of Amiel and Lodabar. And King David sent and brought him out of the house of Matthiah, the son of Eliel, from Lodabar. Now when Mephibosheth, the son of Jonathan, the son of Saul, had come to David, he fell on his face and prostrated himself. Then David said, Mephibosheth, and he answered, here he is your servant. So David said to him, do not fear, for I will surely show you kindness for Jonathan, your father's sake, and will restore to you all the land of Saul, your grandfather, and you shall eat bread at my table continuously. Then he bowed himself and said, what is your servant that you should look upon such a dead dog as I? In verse 13, so Mephibosheth dwelled in Jerusalem, for he ate continuously at the king's table, and he was lame in both his feet. I want to preach primarily from verse 7. So David said to him, do not fear. For I will surely show you kindness for Jonathan, your father's sake, and will restore to you all the land of Saul, your grandfather, and you shall eat bread at my table continuously. I had the pleasure of titling this message, Although Someone Dropped You, God Still Has a Table Prepared for You. Although someone drops you, God still has a table prepared for you. Spirit of the living God, have your way in your service. You always have. Sit me down and speak, Lord God, for I don't know what to say. You speak perfectly. Open up our ears and pull back the scales from our eyes that we may be able to hear and to see. And let us open up our hearts and understand that no matter what we've gone through, you're still here with us. 
and you still not. It's in Jesus' name, that's why they love the Lord. Say amen. Amen. You can see in the presence of the Lord. I'm going to make two, I'm going to make a statement, and I want you to write it down. Those of you watching online, you got to write it down. <clears throat> Knowledge and wisdom are different. Knowledge and wisdom are different. Knowledge teaches you how to do it. Wisdom teaches you when to do it. Knowledge teaches you how to do it. Wisdom teaches you when to do it. You can know how to do something, but do it at the wrong time. Yeah. And not get the effect that you so desire. Because you did it out of time. Knowledge is knowing how to do it, but wisdom tells you when to do it. And when you do it at the right time, you get the right effect. That's why we as people have to be careful because a lot of time we get out of season. God has promised us something, but he didn't tell us when. We have the knowledge, but wisdom tells us when. And we have to learn to be patient. Just because God shares something with you don't mean it's now. You have to use wisdom. The season may not be right. Although you share the knowledge with a young kid about the importance of driving, don't mean they need to get the keys now. Yeah. You give them the keys while you're they're out of season, and then they wreck themselves. I want to spend a little time talking about David as a young boy. Samuel anointed him as king. <laughs> young boy. He anointed him as king. Just like that young lady sitting back there who has so much spirit upon her. But it's in season and it's in timing. You can see it all over her. But it's in season and it's in time. And we can all sit here and recognize it and see it on her. But we have to be careful. Can't rush her into something that's not time for. Mm, yeah. And David was anointed king as a kid. But he didn't become king until some 15 to 20 years later. <laughs> mm. Yeah. He was a king as a kid. Because God said so. Whether you like it or not, or whether I like it or not, he was king. And didn't have a crown on, didn't have a palace, didn't, but he was king. Because God said so. He anointed him as king. And let me drop this in your spirit that whenever you find yourself anointed, you will have haters. Yeah. Yeah. You will have haters. It's just something about being anointed that draw haters. Amen. He was anointed by his brothers. They went crazy about him. Even Jesus' own family rejected him. Didn't even want to follow him. His own family. Your family will reject you. 
when you are anointed. In fact, that Jesus says in the book of Isaiah, chapter 61, verse 1, he says that the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to do. <laughs> he said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to do. So, because you have something to do, you are anointed. But when you ain't doing nothing, there's no need for you being anointed. For the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to do something. So if you ain't doing nothing, you're not anointed. Why would you put gas in a parked car? Ooh, a car ain't going nowhere. Why are you going to put gas in it? Why are you going to put an anointing on someone who is not willing to do anything? But you must understand that anointing will bring things. He was so anointed, you know the story that he fought against Goliath. <coughs> I have to be careful because I don't want to go down a Bible study rabbit trail, but he killed Goliath. It wasn't the rock that killed Goliath. That wasn't it. The rock stunned him and he fell to the ground. Yeah. But if you read further, you'll find out that David took Goliath's sword and cut his head off. That's what killed him. Amen. God was with him. Everybody else was scared of Goliath. And David was shocked. You mean tell me you let him talk to God's people like that? And King Saul said, here, you go fight him. Here, put on my armor. Take my sword. All of it was too big for him. He said, I can't walk in this stuff. Be careful when you're trying to walk in somebody else's stuff. God may have anointed you, but it doesn't mean it's for it now. And be careful of people who want to step in God's position. Because anybody that God has called and they are excited about doing it, you better get away from them. <laughs> you better get away from them. Yeah. Because when God calls you to do something, you start questioning, no, not me. As filthy as I am, the things that I do, no, not me. Be careful of those that jump. They ain't called. God's anointing scares you. When God calls you to a position, yeah, yeah. it scares you. Yeah. Each one of these deacons, deaconess, like, no, mm-mm, 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 mm-mm. None of them like, are you okay? Mm-mm. Can I pray about this? Can I think about it? Pastor, please let me pray about it and think about it. Because if y'all would have said, yeah, I do, I do it, you're not the one. You're not the one. Because whenever you're stepping into something with God, you better be fearful. Because he holds you higher in accountability than anybody else. You have to be careful. It so was that David, he killed Goliath. And Saul has said, if anybody willing to fight Goliath, he said, I will give them my daughter in marriage. Not that David wanted his daughter David was mad because this tall Philistine was talking bad about God and his people. So he decided to do something about it. <laughs> and he killed Goliath. He killed him. So the word went out that David killed Goliath. And everybody was excited. So Saul put David in charge of the military. And David would go out in the battles and fight the Philistines. And when he would come back, all of the women and the people were praising him. Saul killed his thousands. But David killed his ten thousand. Yay! And Saul got jealous. The king got jealous because everybody was praising David for his 10,000 and not Saul for his 1,000. Let me drop this in your spirit. 
Don't ever be looking in somebody else's window or what God's doing for them. There was nothing wrong with David killing his thousands. If that's all God had me to do, then so be it. I can't look at what somebody else is doing and it's much bigger and then I get jealous. No! God said you'll only do this and they'll do that, but both of them will be equal to the same. Be careful. Be careful. Be careful. Be careful. Saul got jealous because the people were looking at David and praising David and not Saul. So he wanted to kill him. I told you, be careful with anointing. He were great haters. So he decided to kill him. But Jonathan, the son of Saul, now watch this, I'm not saying it the wrong way, fell in love with David. Him and David became best friends. The Bible said that their spirits were knitted together. They became close. David and Jonathan, Jonathan the son of Saul. It got to the point where Saul wanted to kill David. He couldn't stand David. But his son, Jonathan, who was close friends with David, would tell David everything his father wanted to do. Jonathan would say, David, go hide. My father, he wants to kill you right now. Go hide. Saul found out that his son, David, found out his son, Jonathan, was telling David everything and he got mad at Jonathan. And then chapter 20, 1 Samuel chapter 20, verse 15, David and Jonathan formed a covenant together. And Jonathan said, I know you are king. I know you are the next king. And what he was saying is, because the next king comes on the scene, they kill all the former king's family. They wipe them out. Whenever there's a new king, and your father used to be the king, you better run and hide. But that new king, he's got to wipe all of you out. But Jonathan said, make a covenant with me, David. We are like this, you and I. Promise me that you won't harm my family. Please promise me. And David said, I will not harm your family. So Saul and Jonathan went out to battle, and both of them got killed. Saul and Jonathan both died in battle. And his son, Mephibosheth, was with this nurse. And as she was trying to escape the battle, she was running to save her life and Mephibosheth's life. He was five years old, but she dropped him. While she was running, she made the mistake and she dropped the five-year-old and both of his feet and legs were lame. Mephibosheth, Jonathan's son. They took him to a place called Lodabar. Lodabar is a place where there's no pool. Lodabar means a place of desolation, isolation. Nobody wants to be in Lodabar. It's a place where there's no hope, a place of no future. That's where they would put people. And they took Mephibosheth with his crippled feet, and they took him there, and they left him. <clears throat> The nurse, the nurse, she did the best she could. She ran with him, but she dropped him. Some of us this morning have been dropped. Yeah. They told you, I'll be back to get you, but they didn't. They dropped you. Dad told his young daughter, because him and his mother were separated, he said, I'll be back to get you on your birthday. And she was so excited. She sat there with him, waiting for a long day, and he never came. 
he dropped her. He was a little kid. And he started funding on you. He dropped you. He sat at the kitchen table when your dad was feeding you alcohol as a kid. And I thought it was funny. And now you became an alcoholic. They dropped you. The woman got you as a little boy. She said, I have nothing now, Lord. She dropped you. They were smoking marijuana. You know how we did it. And we blew it to the nostrils of everybody else. Now the little kids on drugs. They dropped you. The mama left you with the babysitter while she went out to the club. And the babysitter had that way with you while you were a little kid. They dropped you. They dropped you. Whisper things in your ear as a kid. But say, let me touch you here. Tell me how you feel. And now you've got problems as an adult. They dropped you. They dropped you. They dropped you. That cat was never there for me to learn how to grow up and be a man. He dropped me. He dropped me. Twin, never had a dad. Teachers who like to be a man. Come on, do the best you could. He dropped us. He dropped us. There's some people who are watching on social media. You're in a load of bar. You have a nice house, but she's still living with the bar. You have a high paying job, but you're still living with the bar. You still live in a place that's in isolation. You have a big bank account, but you come home to nothing. You're living in a the bar. You've been dropped. Big Willie, you shared with me yesterday how they woke up and left you and your brother. It's just you two. We've been dropped. We've been dropped. We've been dropped. Man said, come up in here the hallway. I'm going to lay on my back. I want you to walk on my stomach. And then I'm going to flip over my back. I want you to walk up and down my back. In the hallway, eight-year-old, he tried to drop me. Mom said, I never wanted you in the first place. You were a mistake. And now my spirit is crushed. She dropped me. Dad never came back to check on you. He promised you he would, but he didn't. And you were left all alone waiting for Dad, and he never showed up. Even to the day, he dropped you. No matter what you're going through, you wish that you could see your dad. If he could just show up one time and just ask him why. But he dropped you. David said, Say, go down to the motor bar and get a village shell. Go down to the place where nobody wants to go. Go down to the place where everybody's left and tell him that King wants him. Tell him I know he's crippled, but I still want him. Tell him I know he has an abortion, but I still want her. 
would turn their backs on them. They talked about them a time. I want them in a place that nobody wants to go, a place that everybody dug out. Tell them that I would take the foolish things and shame the wise. Tell them I still want them. Oh, he comes. He comes and the king says, I know that they talked about you. I know they dumped you out. I know they lied about you. I know they trumped you and you're hurting today. For years you've been carrying a pain. Your husband, he trumped you. You gave him everything and he just dropped you. You thought you had the best wife. <laughs> she left you. She left you, and now you're sitting in a corner by yourself. You go to work in the day and come home and sit in the corner in Lodabar Bar because she dropped you. But the king told him, I know you're crippled. I know they talked about you. I know they lied on you. But I want you to know this thing. That you have my DNA in you, and because I am a king, you're a king. Yeah. The things you have been through will be no more. There will be no more. He brought him up. He said, You will be at my table. You will eat what the king eats. Yes, you're crippled. Yes, they talked about you. Yes, they threw you away. But I'm God. And you will be with me because I love you. Yeah, yeah. Power yeah. to leave you with this one thing. As I close, when you sit at the table, there's a tablecloth. <laughs> when everybody sits down, we're on the same level. All of your crippleness is covered. Yeah. All of your shame is covered. Yeah. Everything you've gone through that you did right is covered. How they abused you is covered. God shall prepare a table in the midst of your enemies. Those yeah. who dogged you out, you got a table sitting before them. Yeah. Those who said you'll never be there, I got a table sitting there. Yeah. Those who robbed you, I got a table sitting there. Yeah. Those who raped you, I got a table sitting there. Those who took everything away from me, I'm going to give it back. Yeah. 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 I'm going to give it back. Yeah. I'm going to give your mama back to you. I'm going to give your daddy back to you. I'm going to give your children back to you. I'm going to give them back to you. You're sitting at my table. So no matter what you go through, no matter what you've gone through, he is going to pull you out of Lola God. He's going to pull you out. He's going to pull you out. No more shame. No more hurt. No more disappointment. No more tears. No more crying. That's the last time they dropped you. I said, that's the last time they dropped you. Although they dropped you, God still has a table prepared for you. Yeah. And when we all sit down, yeah. we're going to be on the same level. Yeah. There will be no more dropping. There will be no more crying. Amen. Thank you, God. Have a yeah. Yeah. It hurts you gotta have it because somebody dropped you it's hard when somebody dropped you and now you picked up the habit and you cry day and night because you wanted to get rid of it you stood up there this thing preached, and people call on you, they ask you to pray for them. They don't know yeah. that you've been dropped. Yeah. I said, I need to let you in. I said, please pray for me. They don't know. Pastor is dropped. Hide it! Try to break it! Mm. Oh, yeah. He 
said, my grace and my mercy. <coughs> Keep your head up. God's got your back. <laughs> he said, my grace and mercy is sufficient. My grace and mercy is sufficient. You may have been dropped. But God has a table waiting for you. And all those who said you wouldn't be nothing. All those who touched you in a place you shouldn't have been touched. All those who said things to you they shouldn't have said. He said, I got a table just for you. That's why I had Psalm 23 read just in one statement. He prepares a table for me in the midst of my enemies. That's the only reason why I had that scripture read. It's the table. It's the table. Please stand to your feet. I feel like I am more the fool. Everybody needs to be excited. JP first, Deacon JP and Julie first, but I found a year after that, Kim, <coughs> and you've known me for many years, many years. We parted together, we drank together, <laughs> tell the truth and shake together. We didn't smoke together though we were in the military. But if we were in the military, we probably would have tossed them up too. <laughs> You've been dropped. Know that God knows it. He's got you covered. He's got you covered. He's going to take care of you. He's got that table. It's already waiting for us. <laughs> like I said, when we all sit down, we're going to be on the same level. Our crookedness will be up underneath the table. Our shame will be underneath the table. And we'll sit and smile at one another and thank him for what he's done. For those that dogged us out, those that did things they never should have did to us, he'll take care of us. <laughs> it hurt so bad. It hurt so bad. <laughs> What well, was it not good enough for our life? What was it not good enough for us? I did everything I could. But nothing was ever good enough. Nothing was ever good enough. Sure.
from that greasy submission. I said, I'll take care of it. I'll take care of it. <laughs> Those who watch it on social media, come out of the world. <laughs> Understand that God has a table set for you too. He's going to take away all the shame. He knows you're frustrated. He knows you're upset. But he's going to make it right. He's going to make it right. Is anybody I'd like to make Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior? If you feel him called on you, come now. Just say, Lord, I'm sorry. I turned my life over to you. You will never get perfect. But the fact that you say, Lord, I'm sorry, take control of my life, you will never be without him. Never. But if you don't make him your Lord and Savior, and you die, it's too late. You'll never get a second chance. Never. And all it takes is to come forth and say, Lord, I'm sorry. That's it. That's it. The people may ask me, well, why do you ask people to come up publicly? Because he died publicly for all of us. He died. Wouldn't that be one? Wouldn't that be one to say, I want to give my life to Jesus Christ? And that be honest. join this church. Our doors are open to everybody. We have that you join Jesus first. And don't say, I gotta wait till I get right. You ain't gonna never get right. You don't understand, perhaps I smoke too much, I drink too much. Guess what? Join the rest of us. Join the rest of us. Only difference between you and us, if we say, Lord, I'm sorry, I want to be in your kingdom, he said, come on, I got you. He said, I got you. Would there be another? Would there be another? You can be seated in just one second and we'll get out of here. I'm going to pray for you. Anybody need a special prayer to come up and call a special prayer for us? What's your prayer?
the spirit of the living God is always here. He heals wounds. He gives strength to the weak. The meek he exalts. All of us have gone through some horrible things. And it's bottled up on the inside of us. Those who are watching on social media, they've gone through so horrible things, it's been bottled up on the inside. But God has a table prepared for us. We're going to sing again. We're going to rejoice again. We're going to give praises to God again. We're going to give praises to God again. Jesus, I thank you for your rescue after being drunk. I thank you, Lord God, for your peace in her heart, Lord God. Oh, and the words that she will speak will make a difference, Jesus. And we bless you right now that the words she will speak will be your words, Lord God. And we thank you right now for moving in her life in every situation, whatever it may be. God, as you work a work in your daughter, do the work that it may be apparent to everyone around her that you are in her. In Jesus' name. Amen. Sister Vanessa, it's my understanding that you want to join this church and make it your church family. Yes. Sister Vanessa is now became a member 
of Sunrise Fellowship Ministries. Just like a gang member, you think they're gonna let you just walk off and leave them? You know too much. They're not gonna let that happen. Neither will Satan let you just walk off and leave them. But you already know you got the victory. No matter what he does, you got the victory. Don't you ever feel ashamed. Don't you ever say, I'm no longer worthy. You're going to mess up. Watch this. The people who are the worst, he loved them the best. The people who are the worst, the ones who are broken the most, he loves them more. Amen? Amen. So don't you ever do it. You're going to mess up. The pastor messes up all the time. The pastor been drunk so many times, but he still got me. Amen? Amen. Don't you ever, I'm telling you, don't forget that. Your friends are going to turn away from you. You might go, I don't know if you smoke weed or not. You might smoke, <laughs> it's weed. Amen. You might smoke weed with your friends. <laughs> I ain't telling you to do it, but I'm saying it's okay. Don't you say, well, I messed up, man. Do I still love you? I swear, oh, you're crazy. 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 you Amen. Let's go ahead. You stay right here. Let's go ahead and close this out. Amen. Let's praise God. Amen. Let's do that because we're going to spend more. Amen. We bless God for this young man. The enemy has been defeated because he has been rescued. Amen. He decided to be rescued, and we give God praise for him. We thank you right now that what he is walking away from or out of will be blessed by his walking past them. And we give you praise, Lord God, for the smile on his face and his sweet demeanor, Lord yeah. God, yeah. that he will make a difference in the body of Christ, yeah. that the words that he speaks will make a difference in his life, Lord yeah. God. Lord. I anoint his throat, God. Yes, I anoint his hands, Lord God, yeah. for this thing that he 
is doing. Mm, Jesus. This thing that he is doing for this job, Lord, that he will just prosper beyond his even understanding of what he had imagined. But God, I thank you right now for this skull that's on his front and the one that's on his back means that the devil is dead and defeated. Yeah. Hey, yeah. Jesus. Yeah. So we speak over it right now. He will no longer have to wear the skull because death has been conquered by the grave. Yes. And we give you praise, God. You. And we give you honor for work for him to do in the kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. 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 and minds are clear. Let us pray. Eternal Father, I thank you. I thank you for a mighty work that you continue to do in this house. You called this house into existence. And you told me that if we remain faithful to you, you will remain faithful to us. We do the best we can with what we got. And you take care of the rest. And we thank you, Father. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that you would loosen the burden on those who have been dropped, that you will pick us up, take us out along the bar. We know that you have a table prepared for us. And when we all sit down, we'll be on the same level. And all of our shame, all of our problems, all of our addictions will be hidden under the table. And you will wipe it all away. Thank you, Father. In the name of the Father who has created you, in the name of the Son who has redeemed you, in the name of the Holy Ghost who comforts you, I say now be blessed forevermore and go in peace. In Jesus' precious name, let somebody the Lord say amen. 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 God bless you.